Kyrie Irving was seen shopping in Los Angeles today. You have said that Kyrie is, quote, more open, unquote, to joining the Lakers than he has been. What has changed in that, Brian? I think his experience away from LeBron James taught him how important it is to be around a player like LeBron. Um, so I think that the door is unlocked. That said, uh, from everything I understand, Kyrie's relationship with Kevin Durant has never been stronger. And while he's repaired and reopened his relationship with LeBron, I think if you want to know where Kyrie's going to go, watch Kevin Durant. But the Lakers may have a chance to get a meeting, and LeBron may have a chance to make a pitch, and that's way further the, uh, along than they were four or five months ago. Brian, more importantly than Kyrie, how would LeBron feel having gotten sick and tired of Kyrie once before and not all that long ago, how would he feel? Would he want to play with Kyrie again? Well, Michael, have you seen the Lakers roster at the moment? Yeah. I don't think <laughs> yeah. LeBron's in position to be too picky. He has been, from what I understand, he has already begun the recruiting process. Um, he is, I've heard he has had contact with Kawhi Leonard. I've heard he's had contact with Jimmy Butler. Uh, there is no tampering enforcement by players. And while Magic Johnson, the, uh, the guy who got in trouble for tampering before, is no longer there, LeBron is tamperer-in-chief of the Lakers right now. The thing about it is, is I don't know if, you know, texts and calls and maybe a dinner with LeBron is enough for the Lakers to overcome their hurdles that they're going to have. And so I just don't think the Lakers can be choosy. In fact, to be honest with you guys, I think the Lakers really have to look at the trade market. Uh, how willing were they be to move that number four pick? Would they be willing to make an offer for Bradley Beal? Would they be willing to make an offer for a guy like DeMar DeRozan, who possibly could be on the trade block, depending on whether the Spurs want to extend his contract? Um, would they be willing to wait uh, for Anthony Davis a year from now? These are the big decisions that the Lakers have. I really don't think they can honestly think that they're going to get Kawhi, Kyrie or Kevin Durant, even if they have LeBron as their lead recruiter. All right, enough of the Lakers. Let, let, let's talk about a team that's actually defending its championship. All right, the two-time champs. Let's talk about the Warriors for a second. And there are reports today, or what the Warriors said today, they're hopeful, Brian, that Kevin Durant can play later in the finals. I don't know what later means. Do you have any sense of that? Because Tony and I are on record multiple times as saying, we didn't believe he was playing in this round, and we doubt he's playing in the next one. What do you think? Yeah, well, the big thing that they said today is that he's still not on the court, and he may not even be on the court the rest of this week. And the finals are now less than a week away. So he would need, I would say, a few days of practice and recovery. Um, so when they first had this injury, I know that they said day-to-day -day or whatever, but I was told that he was looking like a three- to four-week injury. Well, yeah. in between games one and two, or right around game one, would be a three-week span. So I actually don't think he's had a setback at all. I think he's actually probably on pace. What I think is remarkable is that DeMarcus Cousins may play before Kevin Durant plays. In fact, they haven't ruled out DeMarcus maybe being available for game one. And while the Warriors are doing great, when they play game one, they will have had nine days off. They will possibly be working in a new player or two with DeMarcus maybe coming back. And for the first time ever, they will go on the road to start the finals. So I think if you're whoever, if you're Milwaukee or Toronto to look ahead, I think your best chance is to hope that you get game one. And I can already say that with the Warriors, thinking that game one might be the tough spot for them. If they get up 1-0, especially on the road, I love their chances for that fourth ring. We will get you out of here on this. Mark Stein has reported that the Clippers have emerged as a strong suitor for Durant during free agency. I'll ask you what are you hearing, and I want to go back, circle back to what you said before. The implication is that Durant and Kyrie Irving might go together, even though to me that would put two of the most unhappiest people I've ever seen on the same team. Well, I'll say two things. In talking to teams out there, there's two things that I've been told. One, there isn't a team out there that feels supremely confident about what Durant's going to do. Uh, when his agent says that he hasn't decided, I think most teams believe that there's truth there. Now, I'm not saying he hasn't leaned or winked to a certain direction, but without going into details about who I've talked to, I think teams involved in this aren't sure. And the second thing is teams believe that Durant will set the market. 
Once Durant makes a decision, it will be up to him with what that team decides to do. Like, for example, if Durant decides to go to the Knicks and he says, trade your number three pick for Anthony Davis, the Knicks will try to do that. If he says, keep that pick and take R.J. Barrett, the Knicks will probably do that. If Durant comes on and says, go sign Kyrie Irving or clear space for Kyrie Irving, that's what's going to happen. Right now, Kevin Durant is the most powerful person in the NBA. He will dictate the balance of power next year. He will dictate the top level of free agency, really like LeBron did both in 2010 and 2014.